These old touch tone telephones with the cord on them, they do have some salvageable parts. Welcome to Hack a Week. This was in a pile of stuff that somebody gave to me and I had it hooked up here in the house for a while and then I ran into a telephone problem. Uh, all the phones in the house wouldn't work properly and one day I got thinking, I wonder if the culprit is the old analog phone with the switch for the receiver. Sure enough, that's what it was. It was this thing right here. The switch in this is not working properly. It doesn't hang up properly. So we're gonna tear this thing apart today and see what's in there that's salvageable. But before we do that, just a little bit about telephone lines, uh, analog telephone lines. There's two wires on them. There's a tip and a ring wire. And when the phone is hung up, they carry around 48 or 50 volts DC. When you pick up the phone, it creates a closed loop between those two all the way back to the telephone substation. And then the voltage drops to something like four to eight volts. Now when it rings, that's a little different. There's, uh, I think it's about up to 60 volts at 20 hertz comes through the line AC voltage. And even though it's a thousand ohms resistance across those wires, it's enough to give you a little zap. I actually have had that happen when I was working on a uh, home phone line once and a ring came in and it was a bit of a jolt. So when you're messing around with those wires, try not to grab both at once in case somebody calls you up while you're working on them. Or Better yet, disconnect everything out of the network box outside your house. Okay, well, that's enough about phone lines. Let's tear into this thing and see what's inside that we can add to our collection of hackable goodies. Well, here's our little telephone. This one is called the Trimline uh, series. It was first introduced in 1968 because Touchtone came into uh, into being in 1960-something, uh, in the 60s. Anyway, this one is a little different from the very first generation. The first generation had smaller buttons. If I had to guess, I'd say this one's probably from the eh, late 70s, early 80s. Southwestern Bell. So it's after the breakup, the big uh, Bell telephone breakup, the antitrust thing. Look that one up. That's quite a story. Anyway, so we've got the... Uh, the base unit and the receiver, the part to put to your uh, to your head when you want to talk. So we need to take the cord out. That's pretty simple. Just uh, pull that out, a lot like an Ethernet cable. In the bottom of the receiver is a single Phillips screw right there, and that's what holds the top on on the base unit. Uh, let's see. We're just going to pull that off, and there it is. Look at that. And inside here. Let's see, uh, that would be the ringer. That's a uh, piezo electric element. So that's a, definitely a salvageable item. Get that out of there. We can hang on to that for, I don't know what, <laughs> whatever. It acts uh, as a, a speaker. You can use it as a pickup in a uh, guitar. It can work as a, uh, a microphone. They're handy. Use those for all kinds of things. This is the uh, the circuit that does the whole thing of the ringer and then routing the telephone signal up into the handset part. This button right here is the button that has gone bad in this phone. It doesn't want to doesn't want to hang up properly. There's not many components in here. There's a little single eight pin dip, um, a resistor array several diodes, a couple capacitors, that's about it. So there's not too much more to salvage there. So we can go ahead and set that aside, I guess. Now we can move on to the uh, handset here. Now you might look at this and say, hmm, no screws visible anywhere. But right here underneath this switch for tone and pulse, Yes, this is actually during the time when it was in transition between tone and pulse, and in some locations, you still had pulse. Uh, when I moved to Hawaii, in fact, when I was 30 back in 1990, uh, they were still on a rotary pulse system, and I had a phone like this, and I had to put it on pulse. And when you would push like three, 
in here, you wouldn't hear the uh, the beep noise. You'd hear click, click, click. If you push nine, you'd hear click, 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 all the way up to nine. This little cover right here will come off if you just kind of put a screwdriver into that little hole and pry up and looky there. There's the Phillips screw and there's one. Let's take those out. Screwdriver's getting out of hand here. Okay, those two screws are out and off comes the cover. So what's in here? Well, let's see, a few things, electric component wise, a couple transistors, some capacitors, a uh, 16 pin dip. What is that thing? That is a uh, UM9121-5A and I have no idea what that does. It's probably a proprietary telephone uh, chip. Probably the one for the uh, touch tone. Uh, sounds. Let's see. This should pop off from here somehow. Not sure if it's held on with screws or if it's just clipped in or what the deal is. Ah, yep. If we look down in there I see a little clip. There's one. There's another one. Let's pry that apart. And uh, where else? Oh! Wait a minute, I see more screws. There's two Phillips screws right there. Let's take those apart. Let me get those out of the way and can we lift up the board yet? Um, yep, if we slide it that way, it pops off from these two other little clips. Now that's the, uh, the jack that comes in there. I'm just gonna clip those wires. Right there is a little condenser microphone, definitely a salvageable item. There's the keypad and all the goofy buttons. Buttons are kind of fun. Um, you can hang on to those and do strange things with them. Stick them on some of your projects, maybe. Um, you know, I don't know. Whatever. Screws, those are definitely always salvageable. I always save screws out of things, throw them in my little my little screw pile here got bunches of them they come in really handy and they're free so let's see we'll uh, let's cut the wires to that condenser microphone there's a nice speaker element I don't know how many ohms that is but we'll find out in just a minute um, there's a switch good salvageable switch right there why not let's keep that Throw that in my box of uh, switches. Let's see. There we go. Box O switches. Put that thing in there. We'll put that to use someday. And let's see all this stuff. There's one more switch. Um, I could desolder that and get it out of there, I suppose. Uh, it might be a little tricky because it's um, actually soldered on the top. Looks like it's flow soldered right there. Uh, maybe not. Not really worth the effort. A couple of green LEDs there. Those could be pulled out fairly easily. Well, let's put that aside for now. Let's see how many ohms this guy is. We'll just strip a few uh, millimeters of wire back here. Twist these wires up. See what the meter says. My meter that likes to read, ouch, when there's an open circuit. Wow, really? 140 ohms. Huh. How about that? Very high impedance on that thing. So that's a 140 ohm speaker. Now the microphone is buried under this plastic piece here. It looks like it's held in with some nothing more than a little hot glue. You can kind of pry that stuff off with a screwdriver. And let's see. That should just pop out of there now. I think that's all that was holding it in. Yeah, the, the green portion's got a couple of little clips there. It looks like if I just do a little prying, and it's still buried underneath all this foamy stuff here. Um, 
looks like it was loaded in from the front side of this plastic bit. And there's a little hot glue on there too, holding it in. They really liked their, uh, liked the use of the hot glue on this stuff, I guess, huh? Let's see if we can peel away some of this foam. And there it is. You can see it in there under the foam with its little rubber protector on top. I can probably just pick most of this glue out of the way. Give the thing a little push. And there we go. There's a little condenser microphone. So here's the goodies we salvaged. Uh, piezo element, uh, condenser microphone, and a speaker. What are we going to do with all this stuff? Well, you could use this uh, microphone, uh, but you need to make a preamp for it because it's an electret microphone. It needs to have electricity going through it to work properly because it's a condenser. It's basically a capacitor. And uh, on the board here are the little goodies that did just that. There's a little preamp section in this printed circuit board that was the uh, preamp for this microphone. And right there is a little transistor, that one right there. That is a uh, C9014. That's an NPN transistor, and all we need to go with that are a few resistors and a couple of capacitors, and we can make a little preamp for this microphone. So let's pull some of the goodies off here and see if we can build a preamp. So we're going to desolder this uh, transistor. You could use a, a little solder sucker, which is like a uh, soldering iron that's got a little vacuum bulb on it. You can suck the uh, solder right off the board. I'm just going to do it with uh, the soldering iron. I'm just going to pre-warm these a little bit. And um, another way you can do this is just take a little screwdriver and get it caught under the edge of the component that you want to remove. We'll do that just like that. And then go ahead and apply a little bit of heat here. We should be able to just pry this right off the board really quickly. There it goes just that simple. Now there's a couple of capacitors on here we can use. These little uh, ceramic capacitors that are labeled 104 and I believe that those are 0.1 microfarad or let's see that would be 100 picofarads. I think that's right. Anyway let's see if we can get some of those off the board too. So I've got everything I need for this little preamp that I pulled off from this circuit board. There are two 0.1 microfarad capacitors. They say 104 on them. What that means is a 10 with four zeros after it. And let's see, what is that? That's uh, 100,000 picofarads, which is 100 nanofarads, which is 0 0.1 microfarads. Anyway, two 104s. There's the uh, 9014 NPN transistor. I need two 100,000 uh, ohm resistors and the color code on them is brown black orange there's two of those I need a 10,000 ohm resistor there's one right there color code on that is brown black yellow so that's everything I need and I extended the leads a little bit with some pieces of solid copper wire because they're so short when they come off the circuit board it's hard to work with them on a breadboard so I just extend the leads a little bit. Now we can put all this on a breadboard and see if we can get it to work. So here is the schematic for our Electret microphone preamplifier. There's the two capacitors, one there at the input, one at the output, and there's a transistor, resistor, 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 and uh, anyway, I have built this before, something really close to it. It was uh, just a little single transistor preamp. You can look that up on the Hackaweek website. Um, I'll put up a link here in the uh, description where that page is and the video for it. You can find out a little more about the ins and outs of how this works. This is the 9014 as viewed from the bottom. The emitter, base, and collector are arranged just like you see them here. And here's the emitter, base, collector on the schematic. So there's the whole schematic. And here is the whole thing laid out on a breadboard. Um, just like the schematic. So we can connect this to power right now. I'm going to power it up with uh, 5 volts. We'll connect these two leads to the oscilloscope 
and uh, then we'll get the camera pointed at the oscilloscope. You can see what's going on with the waveform if this actually is doing anything with amplifying this microphone. Okay, here's the breadboard all set up. There are the outputs right there. There's the one coming off from the preamp. That's the ground lead connected to the oscilloscope lead. There's the microphone. Six volts is going in here, not five. My, uh, my power supply goes to six from 4.5. So we're running six volts. Now let's go over to the oscilloscope, the old 453 Tektronics. Hey, hey, look at that. There's waveform showing up. It actually works. How about that? We've built a preamp for an electric microphone from the guts of a telephone, including the mic. We even pulled that out of there. So there's fun stuff to be had with an old telephone. One of those type anyway. So if you see one in a thrift store or somewhere in a junk pile, grab it, take it home, tear it apart, have some fun building a preamp. Um, you could hook this thing up to a uh, an LM386 amplifier that's just a little half watt amplifier and uh, amplify your voice. You can do a lot of things with this little preamp. Um, it's just a fun little project and you can learn a little bit about electronics. As I mentioned earlier, you can check out the Hack a Week page on the single transistor preamp, although I think I used a JFET transistor on that one. But anyway, there's a lot of good stuff on the Hack a Week website. If you want to learn about electronics, go there and uh, salvage some electronics and take things apart and build it on a breadboard and learn about electronics. And that's about it. We're going to wrap it up for this week. And uh, I'd like to thank you for all of the donations. Thanks a lot for watching. And until next time. Now I can. Oh, hi, hello. Let's just smash some shit. Look, I am your father. Wait, that was from a different movie.